Good morning, all. I hope you had a good week and are uh, enthused about today because today is back to Sunday, back to church Sunday, uh, rally day, some churches call it. And we gather with new energy and we gather to, to uh, celebrate a new year that starts much like the old year finished as we gather to worship God. We have a number of people with announcements this morning. You want to go first? Good morning. And speaking of starting a new year, we're starting to work on the budget for next year. So we have envelopes for you in the back if you haven't already been given them or picked them up. Uh, this is your card for giving us an estimate of your giving for next year so we can get an idea to see how much we can spend. Uh, inside is uh, a letter from uh, the pastor and the clerk of session and also a letter that tells you what our budget was for this year to give you an idea of what expenses might be. So if you could pick this up on your way out if you haven't gotten it already uh, and fill your card out and return it by October 6th why the administrative team would appreciate that very much. So I'm here to speak about the Peace and Global Witness Special Offering. That offering will be taken on October 6th, so I'm getting it just a little early. And I uh, just want to highlight, first thing I want to highlight is there's this handout that I'm reading from and the uh, envelopes are right in the back in the middle there. 25% uh, of this offering will stay to support our own congregation in our community, so that's a good thing. 25% to our mid-council to join other congregations to support work in our region. And then 50% goes to uh, support Presbyterians across the globe. Some of the things that are occurring across the globe, they're starting a new, a newly launched effort in Central America. Um, there's a lot of violence in that there. And so again, this is about peace and witnessing uh, but it's also, they have a local example in Waynesboro, PA, fairly local, where they do uh, laundry for those in need. It's called Fresh Start, Loads of Love. And then uh, also Native American in, in our country. Uh, some of the money has gone towards that as well. So uh, a lot of good things going on with this money. And again, that special offering will be taken on October 6th. Uh, information's in the back. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is just an update on our roof project. So we put a couple slides as a reminder. So in May is when we came up first time to introduce that we were looking to raise funds for a new roof here. Um, Vinny, or Nancy, if you could. So it was a concept of, again, continuing with this congregation to grow the body of Christ, our mission and vision. Uh, and we need the facility to support that. So that was the ask is to see what our congregation could do to support, knowing that it's a costly project. Go ahead, Nancy. A little bit of the background, so you can see when our roof was initially dedicated, we have been around for quite some time. So that, would, that means that we had a high quality roof, but it was time for, for change. Go ahead, Dan. We took some pictures and from a distance, reminded everybody that the place looks great. Like a lot of times, the further our, you are away, the better it looks. <laughs> But if you dive down and you get a little bit closer, you could see that it was definitely time. And even we had some of the issues within um, this area that we knew that it was time for the roof project and had to happen. So the ask, go ahead, Nance, to the next slide, one more, was around um, trying to raise the money without having to take a loan and estimating the project to be around $100,000. In May, we had already saved around $40,000 for this project, 
uh, but then needed the help of the congregation. Again, you know, small congregation, we said at the time, always seems to step up, and once again we did. So if you go to the next slide. So this is where we are. We are just about at the goal. Um, the project, uh, we have identified the contractor to do the work. Uh, the work's going to begin in October. The total cost of the roof, you can see, is $106,000, uh, a little bit more than $106,000. Uh, we already paid the initial around $36,000 out of that money that we had saved. We had uh, saved additional building funds through a CD, so that's been accruing some interest. That'll come mature here in January. Uh, we had a significant donation from a congregational member for another CD that we were able to put aside. That's that one that's $30,000 or another $30,000 that will mature in March. So we have now, with all of that, a balance of only around $10,000 on a $106,000 project. And that is just unbelievable and awesome and appreciate everything that everybody in this congregation continues to do. Small but mighty. Um, so we are still asking for any support that you can provide. So you can see in red, our building fund balance is now down to about $5,000. To pay the total amount, that $10,801, we'll use some building fund, and we will use some memorial fund funds to pay off that balance. That, of course, will take our building fund down uh, extremely low, so we need to build it up. So again, as we can as a congregation to continue to prayfully uh, consider adding to our building fund. Uh, as you drive on to um, church property every week, you probably notice that our um, parking lot is going to need some help and support in, in time. So, and there's always, just like at home, there's always projects that are upcoming. So as of September 5th, 15th, that's where we are. Thank you. We're in a really good place and now in terms of the roof project. No loan. We're going to be able to pay for this roof project with, with our giving. Um, and then again, consider moving forward anything that uh, you can help to contribute to building that building fund back up. Uh, we'll appreciate. Okay, thanks. That covers it, I think. <clears throat> I was. Uh, as most people that are involved in agriculture this year, we're all sort of grumpy about the fact that it's been so hot and so dry. It seems like we could just die to have an inch of rain. And I, I was, you know, as, as a person who has sold a lot of trees, bushes, and shrubs this year, knowing that there's a lot of people that planted them and immediately left for vacation, <clears throat> I expect there'll be a lot of warranty claims. So I've been grumpy about the weather. And as I was driving around the other day being grumpy about the weather, I passed a field that was uh, a wild field, but it was completely covered with goldenrod. And if you haven't seen the goldenrod this year, you should take a look. It's a spectacular year for goldenrod. These fields that have never been mowed, that are filled with goldenrod, are just awash with this beautiful color. Beautiful. Even though this has been an awful summer for the weather, as far as I'm concerned, I have to say how God has blessed us with the things that we don't always see, but are always there. So enjoy, <clears throat> in spite of, maybe some things that are in your life that are weighing you down, think about how God is still there and blessing you with so many things. Maybe that's a stretch for you to follow. But the idea is that we all have things that burden us, but we also have a God that supports us. Today is the day that the Lord hath made. Come together, let us rejoice and be glad in it.
morning, everyone. Our call to worship this morning. Seek God with gladness and rejoicing. Wake up to God's presence and help. Listen for the word that sustains and delivers us. Recognize the presence who raises and inspires us. Lay aside all that weighs you down and troubles you. Turn away from contention to a community of friends. Please join me in singing our opening hymn as we stand together. In this song, everybody, this is um, our theme song for VBS this year. As you know, we combined with other churches. It was so successful and awesome. And our church every year has a song, and this is it, and Cadence is going to come up for you. And, and other kids, if you guys want to come up, but she was the leader, and she'll show you all the motions. And yeah, Mikey and whoever else knows it, come on up here. This is our VBS song. Didn't Cadence do amazing? Okay, as God has given us peace through Christ, let us take a moment to pass the peace of Christ to those around you.
Our call to confession. The downfall of Judas stemmed from misunderstanding and impatience. His desire for power and greed for gain closed his eyes to Jesus' teaching. His selfish ambition led to betrayal of the one he had loved and served. When we view his sin, do we sense our own? Our prayer of confession. We have wanted to be loyal to you, powerful God, but it is easy to forget that you are in charge. The ways of love and nonviolence do not seem to work. The shame of the cross has no appeal. We want to enjoy our advantages, not risk them for people we do not know. We like some of the things Jesus did and said, but we turn from following when opposition comes and danger looms. Oh God, save us from the temptation to betray and defect. Grant us courage to live as disciples. Amen. We are challenged so often by our society and by the culture that we live in to do things that are contrary to what Christ has taught us to do and led us and has shown us and has been the example for us. It's pretty easy to not come to church. It's pretty easy to not put your hand out to someone in need. It's pretty easy to be inward looking. But that's not what Christ has asked us to do. He wants us to step out into this world, into this community, and show his love. And he has given us faith in order that we might do that. He has strengthened us. If we but feel it, we can act on it. This faith that we have received comes as a gift, comes also with some responsibilities. But the gift that it comes with is so precious. The gift that we have through our faith is that Christ said to us, I will take your sins upon myself and I will give you life eternal. So it is through that faith in Christ as Lord and Savior that I can proclaim to you today, your sins are forgiven. Hallelujah and amen. I was asked this morning if I'm a morning person. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you judge here. It is, it is such a joy um, that we have that we can celebrate, celebrate our kids. And it is such a privilege that we have that we can pray for them as they go into this new school year. So, honestly, I'd like all the kids to come up. If you have a backpack, I'd like to see it. I'd like you to bring it, or go get it, and bring it up. So, pull one thing out of your backpack. I don't care what it is. Just pull any one thing out. 
pull something. Doesn't matter. There you go. <laughs> now hold, hold it up so people can see it. Yeah. So sometimes it's a book, sometimes it's a pen, sometimes it's a computer, sometimes it's a jump rope. Athletic. It's wonderful. That's hand sanitizer. That's a pencil. And it's, I've never seen one of those before. That's pretty cool. Did you show that to everybody? You get whacked. Go ahead and make it work. <laughs> Proverbs. You got everything, sweetie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, wonderful things that you hold in your hand. Wonderful things that you'll be using throughout the year. Things that are in that backpack. You know, there's some days where it will be so heavy. There will be some days where it's so packed full of stuff that you could hardly even lift it up. And there'll be some days when it seems like very light and that you can just walk without a care. There'll be books, there'll be tests, there'll be things that, maybe notes that you receive from friends. There'll be all kinds of things that are in that backpack that are at some point important to each of you. There'll be tools that you'll use. There'll be things like sanitizer that'll keep you safe. There'll be things like jump rope that'll help you be athletic and be, you know, limber and doing things. There'll be computers that will be very important parts of your education. There'll be books, perhaps. I think they still have books, right? <laughs> Lots of stuff. All of those things are, built, are placed before you so that they will be used to help you, to educate you, to bring you a little bit closer to being an adult, or being a little bit closer to God, being a little bit closer to where you're going to be in this world. So as you carry that backpack, know in many cases what you're carrying is your future. So as I offer a prayer for what's in those backpacks, I would also ask you to pray for your future and how you are being educated. Let me pray. Father, we, we come before you with, with things that are important to us that we carry. They are things that will be integral in our future. Sometimes it's as simple as a pencil, sometimes it's as complicated as a computer, sometimes it's as informative as a book that will help us know you better. So Father, please, be a part of every person who carries those items. May they feel your presence through them, May they be strengthened by them. Father, may that backpack be more than just a container of stuff. May it be something that supports the future in each one of them. Father, in addition to praying for these backpacks, we pray for the children. They are our future. We would ask you to be particularly keen to their need, particularly aware of their safety. Help them be safe. Help them be sound. Father, we also pray for the educators. There's no sense in thinking that children can do this on their own. They have you, but they also have those people that you have inspired to teach, to be administrators, to be those people who are so loving that they have chosen a life of teaching. It's not an easy life, Father. You know as well as they do that there are challenges before each of them, but you have given them the strength that they can go forward to teach, to educate, to nurture, to be examples of what the future could be through you. Parents, grandparents, mentors, neighbors, all those people, all of those people can be teachers. All of those people can be examples. So as they are living their life, may the love that comes into their lives be reflected into these other people. Father, indeed, we pray for the backpacks, we pray for the teachers, we pray for the children, we pray for all of us that we might lift up your next generation, that you might be inspired by what we want to do in your name. Thank you, Father. Thank you for all the blessings that you have given us through these, through these backpacks, and may the future be secure through them. In Christ's name I pray. Amen.
<laughs> Our prayer for illumination. Living God, help us to hear your holy word with open hearts so that we may truly understand and understanding that we may believe and believing that we may follow in all faithfulness and obedience, seeking your honor and glory in all that we do. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Our first scripture reading is from, oh, Kids Rock, please. Okay, our first scripture reading is from the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will favor you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline, and do not resent his rebuke, because the Lord disciplines those he loves as a father the son he delights in. As you know, the Proverbs were written as advice to uh, young men. And I have, uh, over the years, even though I'm no longer a young man, I have really enjoyed reading the Proverbs and taking, into heart, taking it to heart. And one of the key features of that last proverb is, if God is disciplining you, as you think he is, don't get upset about it. Proves that he loves you proves that he loves you. So as we, we go through our lives and we think, oh, God, why'd you do that to me? Well, it's because he loves you. Because he loves you. The, the scripture this morning, the second reading, comes from Hebrews. Um, it's chapter, chapter 12. Um, and, and I'm also going to reference chapter 11 too. But so hear the word of the Lord as it is revealed in he through Hebrews chapter 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Let us run with perseverance the race set out before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and defender of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, forgetting its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners that you will not grow weary and lose heart in your struggle against sin. You have not yet resisted to the point of shredding your blood. <clears throat> and have you completely forgotten this word of encouragement that addresses you as the father addresses his son? It says, my son, my son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you because the Lord disciplines the one he loves 
and he chastens everyone he accepts as his son. Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children. For what children are not disciplined by their father? If you are not disciplined and anyone undergoes discipline, then you are not legitimate, not true son and daughter at all. Moreover, we have all had human fathers who discipline us and we respect them for it. How much more should we submit to the Father of spirit and love? Live. They discipline us for a little while, as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good, in order that we may share in his holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees. Make level paths for your feet so that the lame may not be disabled, but rather healed. May the Lord bless unto us this reading from his holy word, and unto him be all glory and all praise. And Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart bring, bring glory to you. For it is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. We, in chapter 12, are being encouraged to continue the race. And the, the author of, of, the, uh, of Hebrews is uh, using a metaphor, and I, okay, I get it, it's a race. But if you think about the race that we're in, we already won. We've already won. We finished. We've received our prize at the end. Our prize is our life eternal. So this race that we're running, we're running it not to be first. We're running it not to get a prize. We're running it for the joy of running it. So this race that we're in, this lifetime that we're leading, is not something that we're in competition with. We're not struggling trying to get someplace. We're just enjoying the journey. You know, they have said that life has turned into a rat race, struggle. A, th a thing that is always one step behind. You know, it's always, what do we do to get ahead? We have to try a little harder. We have to work a little harder. We have to run that race. Well, okay, we all are trying to better ourselves. We're all trying to leave this world a better place. We're all trying to believe. My father said that one of the great things that a parent should do is seek to make sure that their children start on the parents' shoulders, that we lift them up and that they can start from where we finish and go forward. It's pretty good stuff as far as I'm concerned. But he would never say that he wanted to get someplace at the expense of someone else. So this race that we're running is not intended to beat someone. This race that we're running is intended to, to celebrate the life that we're in. Not easy, right? There are those times when it seems like it's a lot of work. I was uh, reading chapter 11, which is the author is lifting up all the saints that have gone through, well, not all, but a lot of the saints that have gone through history through scripture, Moses and David and on and on. And he would, he would cite each one and say how they had, how they had overcome and even though they had seen some terrible things in their life, they had still overcome because they had enduring faith. And as I read it, I thought to myself, that's great stuff, great stuff. But what about today? Who do you know, who have you known, that has been an example to you that would encourage you in your faith journey? Recently, we celebrated Mary Laura Gardner's passing and her life. And I tell you, what a tremendous saint she was and how she lived a life so filled with faith that she couldn't help but spread it. She couldn't help but tell everybody how great it was to be a Christian and invited everybody to come in and join with her in her faith and her joy going forward. She is a saint that we celebrate. 
And I would remember Dick Morlich, who probably uh, through his life was uh, a tremendous servant of God, but he had struggles through his life. If you knew him, if you knew him well, you knew that there was a period in his time in his life where he lost his voice. There was six months, or I can't I can't remember if it was six months, if anybody remembers. It was it was a period of time where he could not speak. His voice left him. It was a tremendous burden for him. And he he suffered through that time. It was very difficult. And he, he had this thought that maybe he would never be able to proclaim the gospel good news again. It was awful for him. But he, through his faith, endured through that time and was able to return to the pulpit and just inspire generation after generation of people. A great saint. Gone on to his reward. Fred Rogers, right? If you think about someone in our society, in our community, that may have been someone that would have lifted up people, have been someone that you could look at and say, boy, that's really what God had in mind when he made human beings. You would look at Fred Rogers and say, ooh, he's one of the great ones. He's one of the saints that has gone on to the reward. So Maybe today, as you're thinking, as you're driving, as you're going someplace, you can think to yourself of some other names that may come to mind of people in your life that you have seen who have had that strength of faith that has inspired you, that has encouraged you, and that has given you the strength to continue to run the race, continue to live your life in a faithful manner. I was listening the other day thinking about people of faith and, and how do we, how, what little things are there in our lives that we can do to maintain our faith? It's easy to say, you know, keep your faith, brother, sister. Well, I'd like a checklist. You know, I'm sort of a bullet point kind of guy, but there's a story about uh, when in West Africa, uh, when they were uh, taking people and, and selling them into slavery and then putting them on boats to go to places that they had no idea where they were going. They had no idea what the future would hold for them. All they knew is that their world had been completely turned around and they were now going to be slaves in a far off land. So they, they struggled with that, a lot of them, as you could well imagine. But how do you, how do you what, what, what can you do to hold on to to your past, your faith? How can you go forward with anything? They, the women would take seeds that had been grown in their world, knowing that those seeds represented food to them. And they took those seeds and they weaved them into the hair of the women that were going to be sold into slavery. So that when they went across the ocean or wherever they were going to go, that they might, when they get there, they might have something to plant, that they might have something to maintain themselves. They had faith. And I don't know that any of them had heard really about Jesus. I don't know that any of them actually had heard about God and, and all of the joys that have, we have received, but they still had a degree of faith that they were going to go forward. Now, I don't recommend you sticking seeds in your hair, but I do recommend that you think about what is important in your life. Who has been important in your life? Who has fed you? Who has sustained you? And think about how those people, those things, will help you go forward with your life. I'm trying to think of a date. It was probably mid-2000 aughts, I suppose. Uh, my older daughter, Laura, decided that what she wanted to do was to uh, hike the Appalachian Trail. 
And I was like, well, that's good in theory, but you, no. <laughs> well, a father and his daughter. And I, anyway, so she's going to hike. She had a great job with KPMG. She was, a, she was an accountant and was making more money than I've ever made in my life. But she quit it, and she went, and she started to hike the Appalachian Trail. And I uh, uh, thought, okay, I could wrap my head around this. I made sure that she was in contact with us. I said, well, you have to let us know where you are each and every day, on and on and on. So she did it. She completed the trail, walked from Georgia to Maine, did it all in one summer, and uh, um, proud of you, proud of her. Uh, don't know why she did it, but she did it. <laughs> Got off the trail, immediately got her job back, which I thought was spectacular because, you know, if you're going to, if you quit Quality Gardens, I'll wish you well, but if you come back, I'm not sure I'm going to hire you. But anyway, they decided that they brought her right back, same thing, so she was fine. And um, she went, she took a promotion and went to Atlanta. She was working in Atlanta. And a year later, or two years maybe, I don't remember, she says, yeah, I think I'm going to walk the Pacific Crest Trail. And I was like, oh, come on, I'm getting older by the minute here. So, quit her job, and um, <clears throat> went, flew, my wife went with her, and she started in uh, Southern California with her back against the fence, that's the border, and she walked the whole way through California, Oregon, the whole way up. Yeah. And uh, came back, and I was like, well, I guess she's going to live in the basement now. But nope, they hired her back again. <laughs> These people don't learn a lesson. So it was spectacular. And I, again, I was very proud of her. And, and uh, by this time, I said, you know, are you done? She said, well, there's one. No, I said, come on. <laughs> I am. She said, you know, Dad. Life on the trail was pretty easy. I said, yeah? She said, all you had to do was get up in the morning and look for the next signpost. You walked from signpost to signpost to signpost. On the, on the trails, they had what were called blazes. So they would, at a certain point, um, they would put a, a notch in a tree, and that was called a blaze. And so you would walk along and you would come to a blaze, and that was where you were, and then you'd look forward to the next blaze. And so you just followed the trail. You followed it post by post. And I said, well, there's not a whole lot of trail, not a whole lot of trees on the Pacific West Coast up there in the Sierras. She says, no, they built cairns. Cairns were big piles of rocks. So she would walk from rock pile to rock pile. She said it was so, so easy just to see the guideposts and walk from one to the next to the next to the next. I was strengthened by it, knowing that the next one was always going to be there. And I, I find that to be kind of interesting for our lives, you know, for those of us who aren't going to walk the Appalachian Trail, at least not this week. We go where God leads us. And we go in faith forward, thinking that there'll be another place for us to touch, and another place after that to touch. And we follow his lead, and we run the race, if you will, knowing that he is leading us, that he is guiding us, that he is strengthening us, and that he will walk alongside of us. There will be plenty of stones to trip over, she um, would talk about how difficult it was to walk through Pennsylvania. She said that the trail you know, came, comes up and goes through Pennsylvania. She said the toughest, toughest state to go through was Pennsylvania. She said the trail was well marked, but it was so rocky and stony that you would trip and fall at least once or twice a day. And I thought, <laughs> that had been enough for me. <laughs> but, she persevered, even though she was going through these tough times, she persevered because she knew that the next signpost would be there. We're, we're walking, we're running, we're on a race, we're on a journey, we are 
following God's lead doesn't mean that there isn't going to be stones for us to trip over. It doesn't mean that there aren't going to be things that challenge us. We will face many, many, many obstacles in our race. Financial, health, spiritual. There'll be times when we we don't want to run the race anymore. There'll be times when we think, this is enough, I'm, I'm good here, I'm done. But it is because we have faith that we can keep going. It is because God gave us that faith as he had given so many others throughout history that we can look through our manual of memories and say, this person inspired me. That person I want to be like, and I will continue to do this through the faith that I have, because I know God will be there with me. Run the race, because such a great cloud of witnesses has surrounded us, and we will go forward knowing that they will comfort us and strengthen us. To the glory of God. Amen. This hymn uh, that we're going to do is called Trust in the Lord, and uh, it's, it, it is a new hymn. However, it's done in a way that is ancient. This is about as old as uh, the Psalms themselves. Uh, this is the way David, when he wrote the Psalms, you know, the little David played on his heart. Uh, I don't know what other instruments he played, but, <laughs> but this is how they would uh, do hymns or uh, psalms. To be true to the history, we should have done it a cappella without an organ, because you know those are the sinful things that they brought into the church years ago. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, bring, bring. 
we're now going to uh, approach, approach the Lord as a community of faith and prayer. I would ask if there's anything particular that uh, you would like us to lift up as a community. I would be happy to, maybe, hold on, see if this one works. I have a joy. Uh, who remembers um, September 17th, 2004? Like that was yesterday. When, uh, huh? Like yesterday. <laughs> that, was, that was when Hurricane Ivan dumped 12 inches of rain on Pittsburgh. Oh. Remember when uh, McKnight Seabird was underwater? And um, that was the day I was ordained. <laughs> and it's been 20 years since I've been ordained. And, um, but my comments are about you, not about me. A colleague, a friend of mine who was a minister, when I told him I was called to seminary, he said, my friend, you are in for the ride of your life. <laughs> and I'm reminded of John 6, where Jesus, the, the, some of the disciples leave Jesus, and he says to the 12, he said, you're not going to leave also, are you? And Peter says, for heaven's sakes, Je I'm paraphrasing, <laughs> for heaven's sakes, Jesus, where else are we going to go? You have the words of life. And one of the things that I want to say about you and the other 10 churches that I've served in 20 years, you're number 11, parishioners have no idea how they minister to their ministers. You are living witnesses of faith and devotion, steadfastness, little stubbornness salted in, and um, I just ran a list, I've probably 11 churches amounts to like 2,000 people that I've been blessed to come in contact with. And I thank you very much. It's just another church that is, you folks are devoted to Christ, first and foremost, to this great body of Christ. And, um, and I get to meet people like Tom McMeekin and spend a lot of time with him, which is a wonderful blessing, another witness for me. But I, on behalf of the other, I'm saying this to the other 10, Thank you very much for your ministry to me. Uh, this is what God has called me to do, and it's a great way to make a living. So thank you very much. Uh, I'd just like to lift up prayers for my best friend's uh, mom. She had a heart attack on Tuesday. She's currently in Wexford Hospital. Um, CT scans, all that good stuff show that there's no definite signs of brain damage, but she hasn't woken up yet. So she's been down since uh, Tuesday and he's going through a difficult, uh, difficult time. So if we could all pray for him, we'd appreciate it. Mm -hmm. His name's Tim uh, and his uh, mom's name is Kathy, spelled with a K, uh, Sikora. I think, uh, I think there, there's a child of our congregation. I think he's a child of our congregation. His name is Zach Toomey. Um, he was, uh, his, his mother is uh, Marion Toomey, which is uh, Wayne and Roma Parts' uh, daughter. And he uh, uh, was just, just diagnosed with colon cancer, liver cancer, lung cancer and lymphoma. Um, so Zach was diagnosed, is that what you said? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for those of us who know him, I've met him, I, I know Cheryl, I know Brian. Um, it's gonna be a tough time for them, especially for him. So our prayers could go up for that family and uh, for comfort and healing if God so chooses. Anything else? Let us, let's let us approach God in prayer. Father, in spite of all the things that have come before us, we still come before you with a grateful, full heart, saying thank you for the blessings that you have provided for us. We come before you adoring you and, and praising your name, lifting it up on high, because we know that it is through you that all good things come. 
Yes, Father, we know we have challenges. We know there are those roadblocks. There are stones to trip over. There are those things that, that get in the way of us being fully engaged with you. But we know that as we trip and fall, you will be there to pick us up. As we miss a signpost and wander off into the distance, you will be there to guide us back. You will always be in love with us. What a spectacular thing that is for us to perceive and to experience your love. Thank you, Father. We adore you. <laughs> we come before you with grateful hearts. We also come before you, Father, with things that are upon our hearts that, that are uh, troublesome to us, things that, that we would ask that you would be particularly aware of. Uh, we, we know a, a lady by the name of Kathy who is suffering she is uh, in need of your particular attention. Bring her back to full health and comfort those who are anxiously awaiting that return to health. Help them to know that it is uh, through you that she will be healed. Father, we lift up to you Brian Toomey's son, Zach. We know that it is a difficult time for them as they face an uncertain future with cancer diagnoses. Maybe there's a uh, surgery, maybe there's chemo, maybe there's all these things that lie ahead of them. There is, of course, the uncertainty. But we are certain that you will be there with them. So we thank you, Father, for your presence in those lives that need you so dearly at this point. Healing, comforting, strengthening, we know, Father, that a lot of times these uncertainties can result in sort of a depression that, that takes people from the light into a dark place. Help us as, <clears throat> as your children to see them in their darkness and to go to that place with them and lift them back into the light. May the love that you shine into our lives <clears throat> be reflected as a light into theirs. Father, we know there are people that are waiting for uh, appointments. There are people that are waiting for um, medical things to happen, and patience is sometimes very difficult to come by. So we would ask that you would, you would strengthen those people who are waiting, waiting on diagnosis, waiting on treatment, waiting on things. Today would be fine, we say, but we know that things come in your good time. This world, Father, seems at times to be uh, contrary to you, contrary to your love, contrary to so many things that you find to be essential. There's hatred, there's violence, there is unspeakable things taking place in various places throughout the world. We see conflict, we see war, we see hatred. Father, please, Please be with those who are struggling so hard to bring peace. Help those in positions of power know that there is a more excellent way through your love. There is a more excellent way than violence. There is a more excellent way than hatred. Rise up a peacemaker. Rise up someone who can bring that sense of calm, that sense of peace to the places in this world that seem so racked with hatred and violence. Father, we, we think of our own community and we think of the many people that are working so hard in this community to, to bring it to a better place. We think of school teachers, we think of administrators, we think of caregivers, we think of all of those people that stand ready to rush into danger just to to save us, to be between evil and us. So we would ask that you would strengthen them, empower them, bring them home, safe at the end of their shift, at the end of their deployment, at the end of their career. And for the teachers and the caregivers, may they, may they feel the zeal that you have given each of us as we seek to bring your people closer to you. So, Father, in all things, we praise you, and in all things, we thank you. But now, Father, may you hear us as we pray together the prayer that your Son has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I uh, appreciate the fact that no one called, well, one person called me out last week because I forgot the Apostles' Creed. So I would ask you now, having heard the Word of God, having experienced it, having thought about it, may I ask you to stand and affirm your faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended to the dead. He rose, on the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to be judged the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. There we go. Keep up. <laughs> There. It is. All right, folks, that's you. It is fitting for us to give thanks. It is right and fitting, our joy and our salvation, that we show all times and all places to give thanks to you, Almighty, everlasting God, through Christ our Lord, by whom you made the world and all things living and moving. We bless you for your continual love and care for every creation, for every creature. We praise you for forming us in your image and calling us to be your people. Above all, we thank you for sending Jesus to deliver us from the way of sin and death by the obedience of his life, by his suffering upon the cross and by his resurrection from the dead. We praise you that he now reigns with you in glory and ever lives to pray for us. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who leads us in We give thanks to God that our Savior, Jesus Christ, before he suffered, gave us the memorial of his sacrifice until his coming again. For on the night of his arrest, he took bread, and after giving thanks to God, broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this as a memory of me, of a memorial of me. In the same way, he took the cup after summer, supper and said, this cup is the new covenant sealed by my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this as a memorial of me. Creator God, show forth among us the presence of your life-giving word and Holy Spirit to sanctify us in your whole church through the sacrament. Grant that all who share the communion of the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ 
may be one in him and remain faithful in love and hope. And as this grain has been gathered from many fields into one loaf, and these grapes from many hills into one cup, grant, O Lord, that your whole church may soon be gathered from the end of the earth into your kingdom. To God our Maker, and for Christ our Lord, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor, glory, and power forever. Amen. Amen. I did that on purpose. The next pastor that comes may have a completely different way of presenting the elements to you. This is a, a liturgy that is practiced in many places. It's a participation between the congregation and the pastor. It is intended to bring you a little bit more emotionally involved with what is about to be given. It is something that you may like, you may not like, but it is something that I think is important for you to experience before the next pastor is called. Because that could be a question for the PNC, it could be a question for the congregation. How do you celebrate communion? How is it meant to bring you closer to God? How is it close, how is it to be a memorial to his sacrifice? These are things that we as a Presbyterian congregation should give some thought to going forward. But it shouldn't get in the way of what we're about to receive. For on the day that Christ was given up, he did take bread. And after having given thanks to it, he broke it. And he passed it to his disciples and he said, take and eat. This is, this is my body, which is broken for you. And as you do this, Remember me, remember me and my sacrifice. And the same night after they had supped, he took the cup. And again, having given thanks for it, he passed it to his disciples and said, take and drink. This is, this is my blood, which is shed for the remission of your sins. For as often as you eat this bread and Drink this wine, you are declaring my death until I come again.
People should come from the east and the west all to gather at the table of our Lord and Savior. He has offered this to us. He has given of himself. He has said that this is his blood which has been shed for the remission of your sins. This is a new covenant. Drink ye all of it. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be able to gather in your name at this place, at this time, to remember you, to remember you, to celebrate your death until you come again. May you be a part of us in a way that brings strength to us. May you encourage us as we go out into this world, holding fast to the knowledge that you have saved us and that we can save others through faith in you. Thank you, Father, for the day and all the blessings. It is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. We have been blessed in many, many ways, right? Countless ways. Strengthened by those blessings. And now we will return some of those blessings unto God. Those blessings come as an offering. Sometimes that offering can be done in a monetary way. Monetary? Be great. Appreciate it. Need it. Can't live without it. Keeps the lights on. Keeps God's word in this place and going forth. But there's more. There's more that I'd ask you to offer. I'd ask you to offer of yourself in some way that glorifies his name in this community, in this world. So yes, we need the offering that you need to offer. It is in Christ's name that we do these offerings. Give with a grateful heart. Father, we lift this offering up to you and ask that you would find it acceptable on your sight, that you would use it as you use us to bring glory to your name here in this place and beyond. Throughout your kingdom. It is in Christ's name we pray. Amen.
appreciate the beauty of the world around us, we think to ourselves how great it is that God has given this to us. We think to ourselves, thank you, Jesus. We think to ourselves, what can I do to strengthen this world? The golden beauty of the, it's called Solidego, when I sell it, but nobody buys it when I call it goldenrod. <laughs> it's nothing to sneeze at. Well, maybe it is, depending on your, your ability to withstand its beautiful pollen. But I would ask that you go out into the world with courage, that you hold on to all that is good, that you return no one evil for evil, that you support the faint-hearted, that you help the suffering, and that you honor all people. Now, may you rejoice in the presence of the triune God that is in your life, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Amen and amen.